Hey, time for another Hot Topic Tuesday. Welcome today, February 7th. And this is kind of a continuation on what we did last week. At least I believe it was last week. We were talking about a little bit about buyers and we got into the aspect of how do we make sure that we get our compensation. And I said that the reality is, is there's some special verbiage or dialogue that we need to uh, look at and uh, be able to make that happen. So with that, I'm going to start a screen share here. And uh, I apologize to those who may not have real comp, but most of you will understand Remind Docs Plus. And if you don't have Remind Docs Plus, then just follow along with me because your manager does have or will have the verbiage and access to the docs that I'm gonna be talking about today. So with that, here's what we're looking at. We've got a buyer who we've sit down with and I don't know about you, but I like to make sure that we get paid, right? And by the way, this will be a group participation thing today. So just jump in when you uh, have questions. But I like to make sure that we get paid so that when we go out and we sit down with a seller, we go through a presentation. They say, yes, we want you to represent us. We have an agency disclosure signed, and then we sign the exclusive right to sell. And the exclusive right to sell says that you're going to pay us a marketing fee of 6%. Now, do we do the same thing when it comes to a buyer? Now, I'm going to say the answer should be yes. See, when we get a buyer prospect, we should be setting up an appointment to go through an interview where we say, so do you want me to represent you? in helping you buy this new home and getting that new home at the lowest possible price. They would say yes. We would then have them sign an agency disclosure that we represent them as a buyer's agent. And we know within our company, we are designated agents. And therefore, we would check that top box in the second section of that page. Then we would have them sign. So we know all about that. Then we go to the buyer representation agreement. And here's my challenge to you at this moment. How much does it say that you get paid? How does it address the compensation? Do you know what it says? The agent really, in the, the do you really know the what it says. Okay, so that's that's food for thought. Now I'm going to pull it up. So guys, what I'm gonna look at is the Coldwell Banker because that's where my, um, uh, my MLS access is through. Um, what we have is a library, uh, be it Coldwell Banker as you're looking at here, or if you are looking at the Century 21, you'll see the main library. Now within that, you're gonna click on that and you're gonna see a buyer package. It's gonna be buyer package, it's gonna be something buyer package. When you click on that, all your documents will be there, okay? Now, I'm actually gonna walk through the full transaction. So we know that with this, we've got to start a transaction. Uh, this is going to be a sale. It's on the buying side. Next step, transaction name is delete me, dot, dot, dot. Um, five zero. I'll sell my own home here. Let's see if I can do it. I don't think I can. I can't. It won't like that. Let's see. How about, uh, well, it's not liking any of that. It's not liking my keyboard right now. This is not going to be good if it doesn't start typing. There we go. And I'm just going to do that for right now so that we can do the rest of this. 
Okay, again, we know that we don't want the forms, we want the packages. I'm going to go to the main package and I'm gonna select the buyer package. And for simplicity purposes, I'm gonna say, I want only those three documents. And I now have created my transaction with those three documents. We know that we're going to start out as we talked about with the agency disclosure. We know that we're going to be the buyer's agent. Again, this is should always be checked because we are a designated agency company. We complete this. And then we say, let's go to the next document. Now, this is what we're used to seeing. I wanna go directly to paragraph four. Now I'm gonna read this and then we'll discuss. The compensation, broker shall be compensated by the seller or the listing broker. It does happen that way. Most of the time we are compensated by the listing broker. In the event compensation is not paid by the seller or the listing broker, all parties hereby agree that compensation will be paid by the buyer in the following format, blank percent of the selling price or blank dollars. My question is, is how much do we get paid if the listing broker pays us? 3%. The broker, thank you, Bill. Broker shall be compensated by the seller or the listing broker. Does it say how much you'll get? I, I, so guys, all I wanna do is to point out, it, it's, it's good and the last version of this, we just got whatever the listing broker compensated us at. My concern is, is that if we ever had somebody try to take this further. What if we only were getting compensated two and a half? How much do you get paid? Based upon the way this is written. Two and a half. Now, you're probably only gonna get, thank you, Bill. I believe we're only gonna get two and a half. If anybody wanted to press it, we couldn't get the three that we thought we actually contracted for with the way that this is worded. Okay, now here's another thought. How much do you get paid if you find them a for sale by owner? Zero, unless you have this filled out. Key part, thank you, Bill. Others can participate. Bill doesn't have to be the only one. Yes, Bill's absolutely right because it says we're going to be compensated by the seller, FISBO, if it is not paid by the seller, all parties hereby agree that the compensation will be paid by the broker, or to the broker by the buyer. So we wanna make sure that we do complete this. Now, let me give you a suggestion. Last week, Jim Lorch added some additional verbiage. You could click here, and it's not actually doing what I thought it would do. We could add the clause in here, and you'd have to spell it out, but it's not actually allowing the clause to pop in. Well, the next version, that will happen, but it'll probably be a, a, a different version. Uh, but you could address that by going to the clauses, copying it, and then dropping it in here that says that you will receive, I'm going to put it in simple terms, you're going to receive a minimum 3%. But let me go to this other one. Now, this is in both buyer packages, blue and gold. It's in there. This is the MAR, Michigan Association of Realtors, exclusive buyer agency contract for designated agency. If you use it, this comes on it automatically. Gold, it will have the C21 logo there. 
Now, what you're not going to like is you notice over here on the left, it's three pages long. A lot of people just got paranoid because it's three pages long. Okay? We're used to a simplified one-page version. Well, uh, I'm, I'm going to complicate it slightly. But we all know how to complete this. Not a lot different. Buyer's home address, buyer's email address, their phone numbers, a facsimile. I love that that's always there. What's the purpose of it? It's designated agency and explaining that, which we've already done because of the agency disclosure. We know that we would then put in the property description and we know that I always say be specifically general. Specifically general. Otherwise I can't be so specific that we don't get paid because I said it's a three bedroom home two-story with one and a half baths in Lake Oakland Woods, and they buy exactly that, except for it had two baths. That's too specific. So if anything, we want to be more open, really limiting the area that we're responsible for searching, probably more than anything else. Otherwise, if we don't limit the scope of our search, Technically, we could be held accountable to know everything in the state of Michigan. So we do need to know what they're looking for, and we should keep a record of that in the file that we keep working with this particular buyer. That it's an exclusive agent, that it is only the agent who's been designated to represent this buyer. Shoot, it even gives you the opportunity to do a retainer fee, hourly fee, selecting a flat fee, not a net, but a flat fee. But you'll see that with this one, I've actually boilerplated that the commission is being checked off. That when it comes to here that they need to see paragraph 21, it's defaulted that this applies to any thing that they purchase within six months from the expiration of this agreement. Now I want you to note, let's say this said six or 3%. Right here, this says 3%. Let's pretend. Then what we would get, regardless, is 3%. Let me read what it says. In the event buyer contracts to purchase the desired property, buyer will pay brokerage firm a commission equal to, we're going to say 3%, I don't want to drop the bomb on you yet, 3% of the purchase price. Commission's due and payable upon closing, provided however, blah, 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 blah. We get 3%, regardless, right? Now, let me ask you this, if the listing broker was only compensating 2%, and some of us have brokers where they're only offering compensation of 1%, and we know from last week's discussion that a broker, a realtor broker, must cooperate, but they don't need to compensate. There's a difference. So knowing that, what if the broker was offering zero? How much do you still get paid using this form? 3% because that's what we put in the blank, right? Let me shift it because what it would do, zero, buyer pays it. What if it was two? Buyer's got to see that we get the other 1%, so it's a total of three. So regardless, we're going to get three. How the buyer gets that to us is up to them. How much do we get paid if the cooperating broker offered 4% compensation? With our scenario that we're saying, what if this was 3%? How much do we get paid? 3%. Well, wait a minute. But the, 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 the cooperating broker offered 4%. Well, 
Well, guess what? Based on this contract, we'd have to give them 1% back because we only get 3%. Here's the reason. Paragraph 6 says, buyer will receive a credit against any amount owed pursuant to paragraph 5 for any commission paid to the brokerage firm by the seller or seller's listing broker. And by the way, I don't think it really matters that much if anybody actually ever read the buyer's exclusive right to represent, buyer representation contract. I think it would be interpreted the same way if anybody ever actually looked at it, if there was amount that was owed. So how do we really cover ourselves? And oh, by the way, what if in representing the buyer, you went out and found a for sale by owner that they wanted to buy? How much are they responsible for seeing that you get paid based upon our scenario? 3%. What if you spent a boatload of time, matter of fact, you really work hard for your buyer, and let's say they said, I want to live in this Lake Oakland woods. Man, if there's a spot like no other that I want to be, that's it. So you said, great. And you invested into marketing that buyer. You sent out, let's say, 225 letters to every homeowner and you found one, and they bought it, how much do you get paid? Only 3%. You just did all of that work, and you only get 3%. And some of you are going, well, yeah, but Darwin, I just list the house, and then I get six, and I get all of it. Well, wait a minute. You went out there doing that on behalf of the buyer. Why would you ever charge them or build in another 3%? See, I've got you thinking in ways that you've not thought of before. But that's what you did. You did all of that on behalf of that buyer. And you signed up for 3% because that's the way you've always done it. And you thought, well, yeah, but I could just go out and list the home charge 6% to the seller, I get 3% for the listing side, 3% for the buyer side. Well, that makes sense, again, other than you made those contacts specifically on behalf of that buyer. Now, if all of that gets in there enough that you're going, okay, I, I kind of, that makes sense. Then follow me to the final paragraph here. And this is where it's a little bit tough. So let's see if I can actually Get this a little bit larger for us. Don't know if it's going to do it for us or not. Nope, it's going to shrink. So here's the largest. We'll get it. Here's what it says. Regarding the commission, as in paragraph five, broker will accept the amount of uh, offered by the listing broker or seller, provided that said amount is not less than 3% of the purchase price. Let me say it again in simple terms. We'll take whatever is offered. So if it's 4%, how much do we get? 4%. If it's 5%, how much do we get? If it's 2%, how much do we get? We're going to get 3%. We're going to get 3%. And it says that we get to keep it because we get whatever they offer, provided that it's not less than. Okay? But let me keep going on. Or in the event that the broker procures a for sale by owner, the commission will be 4% of the purchase price. Uh -huh. Wait a minute, I mean, here guys, that's probably 1% more than what most of us have been getting. Some of you, I'm pretty sure you probably gotten more. 
depends on how you've been working it, but you probably potentially did get more. But here's what I'm doing with this. I just want to make sure that you get something for the additional work that you're doing because we are still representing only the buyer. We contacted this for sale by owner on behalf of the buyer. Our job is to get the buyer that house at the lowest possible price. You're going to do some additional work because it is a for sale by owner and there's no other real estate agent out there. So you're building in that compensation. And some of you are going, well, yeah, but it just costs the buyer more money. No. If that, that seller was listed, how much would the commission be? We're saving them 2%. There's 2% less built into the transaction. Okay, but let me read on because see, if I'm really going to work for this buyer and I'm really doing my job and representing them, then here's what I'm doing. That scenario where I'm not just waiting for a home to come up in the MLS, I'm sending out letters. On February 7th, after I get done with Hot Topic Tuesday, I go out and I knock on doors. That just sent a chill through a lot of people's spine. And yes, you may remember there's a fella right here in Rochester who happens to be the top producer. Went out knocking on doors in downtown Rochester for six, seven hundred thousand dollars in the month of December, in the month of January. Yes, it works. And yes, top producers are top producers because they do things that nobody else is willing to do. And why was he doing it? Because he had a buyer that he couldn't find a home for. Thank you, Kyle Matta, uh, if you're watching. But I, I just Kyle's been a wonderful example for us on this. If you're going to go to that kind of work, if you're going to spend money in trying to find them a home, don't you deserve more when you find them one? So here's where it's at. So, or in the event that broker procures an unlisted property, representing the buyer only, the commission will be 5% of the purchase price. Hmm. So you're thinking, well, wait a minute. A buyer would actually sign this contract? If they know what you're going to do, that you're worth it. And by the way, even charging them 5%, aren't they saving money if you find them a home unlisted? How much might they save? Because here, last week, Jeff Christie and I sold a home, listed, and we had seven offers on it. I was talking to John Lafferty. He was participating in trying to get one that was in Royal Oak. 17, one seven, 17 offers. Oh. Might it be worth to the buyer that you find a home that's not even on the market and they have no competition? How much money might you save them because they have no competition? You tell me, is it worth building a 5% commission into the transaction that they would be responsible to see that you get paid? And it's not coming out of their pocket because remember, any money we receive from the seller is credited toward that amount. Now, obviously, this is not our contract, and we know that we need to charge the $295 broker compliance fee, so there it is. Buyer will, in addition to the amount, pay broker compliance fee of $295. We got you all the way covered. So there's lots more in this contract than what there is in our single page. There's nothing that's going to get us in trouble. As a matter of fact, it basically keeps us safer. 
And as long as you don't change this, unless if you want to change the commission amounts, we should all be well covered. Now, discussion time. How did I do? 12.26. We got four minutes to discuss. Uh, and I'm pretty certain that there's probably going to be some questions out there. So uh, go ahead, take yourself off of mute and if you have questions throw them out um if there's uh gosh i don't let's see what just happens I, 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 and i'm going to be shocked if there's no questions so there's a rule that says you you wait seven seconds to see who will ask the first question are you guys kidding me i did that well I didn't shock anybody with this thought about being able to charge three, four, five percent. Well, then I've got a touchdown. I have a question. I I, and I'm going to get a two point conversion too. go ahead, Caroline. OK, so I understand that this verbiage that you're adding is a, a better option for us to tweak this. So why don't we just make this a part of our exclusive buyer agency agreement? So it's in on every and we just have to switch out the numbers if they're higher or lower. Actually, when you go to the package and you open it up, it'll be exactly the way that you see me with that demonstration. Okay, so, so our actual office form. It is defaulted in uh, the exclusive right to represent uh, form JJ. That one is in there and we'll, we'll be looking at, uh, do we make it a company form or not? Or do we keep, we just keep the other one where it's simple, but maybe a little bit more specific ver verbiage to cover us. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Ms. Cheryl, did you have hey. a question? Yes. Um, I sent you a listing last week and wanted to know about how legal is that? If you offer a full price offer, we'll give the agent $2,000 extra. Oh, yeah. So uh, the old agent bonus, right? Right. Um, it depends upon how the buyer representation contract is written. So the, the one thing to remember, it cannot be an agent bonus. It's a broker bonus. Then it's how does the broker treat it who receives it? Is it, you know, so I tell you the truth, I don't even know how our brokerage treats it. I believe it's just the commission and it's split at your normal rate, whatever that may be. Uh, so it is legal, but if, if they have a buyer representation contract that says that you will get blank percent in any amount received from the listing broker will be credited toward that, well, that means there's an excess. Who gets that money? Because the reality is if the broker slash seller wasn't paying that, technically wouldn't the buyer be able to buy that house for that much less? So uh, that's why, Cheryl, we're covering ourselves if we use that verbiage the way that I've written into that form JJ, it will allow us to keep the additional amount over and above whatever amount we've agreed to accept. It makes it hard to negotiate when they want the full price for two thousand dollars more. It's not. Yeah. It doesn't seem fair to. Yeah, as a matter, uh, we it, don't and do that's it. that's a. It's, you're thinking correctly. We need to think about the buyer, because the reality is, if that bonus wasn't there, or we weren't taking it, the buyer could. I guess uh, pay two thousand dollars less if we weren't keeping it. So great, great question. Great food for thought on that one. Anybody else got anything? It takes a confident real estate agent who's brave enough to say, this is what I get paid. Hey, you owe me money. If we earn it, I'll tell you what, I think it's a really great thing and we should feel comfortable in going after it. So as always, guys, if you ever have any additional questions, let me know. I'm going to check the chat room here real quick. 
Thank you, Laura. I appreciate that. I'm going to start shooting for the 4% transaction coordinator. Well, not a transaction coordinator. I mean, okay, but I prefer that we not do transaction coordinator. You're going to represent the buyer, represent the buyer. Remember, transaction coordinator, we're on the fence. Oops, you just went one way. Oops, you just went the other. And that's about all it takes. You got to stay right on the fence as that transaction coordinator. So just represent the buyer. Uh, it's what we're going to do. So why not just do it? So, all right, guys, thank you. I appreciate all the, the thoughts. Uh, you know, I love it. And uh, so that wraps up another Hot Topic Tuesday. See you next week. Social media, that's the Hot Topic Deep Dive. We're going to have Alex Peck. We are going to have Bob DeVore. And we are going to have Mr. James Morgan out of our Belleville office. We're going to have just a good roundtable discussion, sitting on the uh, proverbial couch and listen to these guys sharing all their knowledge on doing social media. See you next week.